Hey, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, what I want to do is I actually want to break down and discuss what SwiftUI is. So before we dive into any of the, you know, actual code, I think it's really important to talk about some key concepts in SwiftUI that's really important for you to know and be aware of before we actually dive deeper. So let's jump straight into this video. So when discussing what SwiftUI actually is, essentially what it is, is a declarative UI framework. So what does this mean? So what all this means is that we describe what we want on the screen and this gets rendered out for us. That something on the screen in SwiftUI is called a view. So let's actually look at what a view is. All right, cool. So let's just look at this very simple example in SwiftUI. So whenever you create a brand new project in Xcode and you actually um, open up the project navigator, you'll get this file here called content view. So within content view, if you actually look at it, you'll notice that you get some code that's automatically been generated for you. Now look here. So notice here how we have something here called a text and it has some text within it or a string, I should say, called hello world. And on our right hand side, we also have that being rendered as well. So when, when I said before that Swift UI was a declarative UI framework, this is what I mean. So we've declared here that we want to have a text on our screen saying with the strings, hello world. And what the Swift UI preview has done for us is it's spat that out so we can actually view this on the screen. Now what I wanna do is I wanna break down this a bit more but not into too much detail, but just so you're aware of what everything is. So when you're working with views in SwiftUI, everything is a struct. So that's what this keyword here is for. Now, if you're someone who's new completely to this and you don't know what a struct is, a struct is something that we call a value type. And a value type is an object that once you create it and you modify it, it creates a copy of itself. Now, this is really important and when you're working with SwiftUI, and I'll discuss this a bit more when we move on to the next topic within this video. Something else that we want to um, notice as well is how we have this here, and this view here is what we would call a protocol. So we're basically saying that we want our content view to conform to the view protocol. The best way to think about a protocol, if this is new to you, is it's almost like a blueprint, a plan. So this protocol comes with this blueprint, which is this computed property called body. And what this does is this is where we place our SwiftUI views so they actually get rendered on the screen. So in this case, what we've said is we want to declare our text on the screen with some strings saying hello world with some padding on it, which is what you're seeing on the screen. So at the bottom of this, you'll notice that we also have this previews and this previews on the bottom here is what allows us to see our hello world on the right hand side. Now we'll go into a bit more detail about SwiftUI previews in the next video, but in this video, we're just going to focus on the actual SwiftUI concepts itself. And what I want to do is I want to go back to our example of our struct. So like I said to you before, a struct is a value type. And whenever we modify our struct, it basically creates a brand new copy of itself. So what I want to do is I want to show you how this can affect us in Swift UI by just typing out some code where we're going to have an arrow and we can rotate the arrow based on when a button is pressed. So let's type this out now. Okay, cool. So we've now got our content view and we've updated it with a new state property. Now I'm going to go into this a bit more in later on in the video, but for now, let's just say that this state property is what we use to manage the data within our content view. And also as well, we have a V stack, which is basically a view that allows us to vertically stack elements. And we've got our button where we're going to change our is open property. And um, within this, we now have an if statement. So what we're saying here is if the value of is open is true then we want to show this image with a rotation of zero or else we want to show this image with a rotation of 180 degrees now looking at this you may think that like this might be this will be fine and it will just come it will just animate between the two but let's see what happens so if i hit toggle arrow you'll notice that we actually don't get a rotation animation we actually get a fade animation now why is that well in swift ui there's a concept called view identity and what view identity is is it's literally the identity of that view 
So what we're doing here is we're not actually maintaining the same view identity. We're creating two different views because we're saying if is open is true, then we want to show this image here or else we want to show this image. So technically we're creating two different views on the screen. We're not using the same view and applying a rotation effect onto it. But how can we actually perform this where we want to actually perform an animation on the same view? Well, rather than using an if statement like so, what we actually want to use is something called a ternary operator. So let me just refactor this and we'll break it down. Okay, cool. So what we've said here is we've now got a ternary operator in this modifier here. So ternary operator is a one line um, expression that evaluates either true or false. And depending on that evaluation, we perform um, either in action or we can return a value. So in this case, what we're saying here is that if it is open, so if this is equal to true, this evaluation here, so if is open is equal to true, then we're going to set the modifier's rotation degrees to zero or else if it's equal to false, then we're going to set that to 180. So what we're saying here is we're actually doing a one line expression. And because we're doing a one line expression here, you'll notice that we're not doing an if statement between two image views. So we're maintaining the same view identity for this image, but the only thing that we're changing is the state of that view. Because we do this, SwiftUI knows not to recreate another view, but instead just modify the state of the view. So in this case, the rotation angle. So what we're going to do now is actually run this and see what happens. And as you can see, we now get the rotation effect that we wanted with our arrow rather than our view fading in and out. But one thing I do want to discuss is I want to talk a bit more about this property wrapper here at state. So you may be wondering, what does this actually mean? Well, like I said to you before, our structs are value types. They're not reference type. And the difference between a value type and a reference type is that a reference is stored in memory, so you can access that same value later. But a value type is an object that's created, and once it's modified, it creates mod it creates new copies of itself. So in Swift UI, whenever we create a change or whenever we you know cause a change to some kind of property in our view, so in this case, this state property here what's actually happening is our body is getting re-rendered to now show the new state of our view. So whenever we change is open to true, the body gets re-rendered, so it redraws everything inside the body, and then this time it will draw the image with the correct um, angle based on the value of is open. So this state property allows us to store values in memory so that when our views recompute themselves, we can reflect the correct state of our objects. So if you're ever working in a situation where you need to show some, you need to show some kind of data that, that could potentially change, well, state is your best friend. Now there's quite a few other property wrappers that we're going to cover in this course, but for now, we're just gonna talk about state and another one later on in this video. Now another handy thing that you can do in Swift UI is you're actually able to print out the changes that happens within a view and it's quite simple. So let's look into this now. So what this line does, print changes, is it allows you to view the changes that have happened within your view. Now if you type this out without capturing it in a let in a let property, you'll get an error like so. And in order to fix the error, if you don't want to use a let, then you have to just simply return the view underneath it like so and this will fix the issue now i prefer not i prefer to not have the re return keyword in my swift ui views which is why i just capture it within a um constant that i'm not really storing but what this allows us to do is it allows us to print the changes that are actually happening within our swift ui view so whenever a state property gets changed you'll be able to see that it actually re-renders and triggers a change within our entire swift ui view now, in order to see this, what you're going to need to do is actually tick on, tick. <laughs> what you're going to need to do is actually tap the play button to actually run it on the simulator because you can't view the console when you're working with SwiftUI previews. So let's do that now. Cool. And another thing I'm going to do just to create a bit more space is actually hide the canvas by hitting this icon here. Cool. So when our view loads up for the first time, you'll see that the view's identity and is open, is changed, is set. So because it, we set it to false by default, that's why it's printing out the changes for the view. It's actually showing us our view 
would the rotations when the value is false? So what happens when we actually tap the button now? So if I tap the button now, you'll notice that it actually triggers a redraw in the screen. And because it triggers a redraw and is open, we now print out the new changes here to tell us that is open has changed. So if I tap this again, it's now changed again. So when you're working with views in Swift UI, one thing that you want to keep in mind that's really important is if you need to try to animate a view, then you want to prefer to use the ternary operator. The only time you want to use an if else statement is if you need to change or show and hide a view. That's another valid case for it. And there's other ways of showing hiding views as well, but that's a one example of a valid case. Also as well, to see what changes are happening within your view, you can actually use the print changes modifier you can actually use the print changes function here to view what changes are happening within your SwiftUI view. And if you need to store some kind of variable that your view needs to react to in the future, then you can actually use the state property wrapper, which will allow you to update your view and trigger some kind of change. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is view lifecycle. And this is when each view has its own life cycle where we can actually check to see when a view has been added or removed from the screen so let's do that now so i've got a different example here and rather than us working with an arrow i want to show you what we can use and how we can check for when views get added or removed to the screen so in this example what we're going to do is that when the button is toggled and message is shown is equal to true we're going to actually add a view onto the screen using an if statement where I said similarly before that it would be a valid use case. And we're also going to use modifiers to check to see when the view has been created and when the view has been destroyed. So remove of the screen. So as you can see here in our if statement, we're now going to show our text view and we're not using a um, modifier with a ternary operator in this case, because we don't actually want this view to be on the screen at all, unless the property value for this variable is set to true. So this is a use case for where you do want to actually create a new view based on the data in your view changing. So we actually tap this button here in the previews when we're running it. So if you hit the play button and you tap the button here, you'll notice that our text view is actually now shown on the screen. And if we toggle off it, you notice that it's now been removed. But we can't actually view what our modifiers are doing unless we actually run this again on the simulator because we're printing directly to the console. I remember SwiftUI previews does not allow us to do this. So let's actually run this. And now this time, while we're going to run in our simulator, if we actually tap this button here, you'll notice that we actually now get something printed into our console. So at this point in our on appear, our text view has now been created because our view has been re-rendered because we changed the state of our view. And now we want to show the text on the screen. And if we wanted to remove this view, all we need to do is just tap this button again. And this would actually now destroy our text view. And because we now set our is message to false, and remember what I said to you, view, views are value types, they create new copies of themselves. This is statement isn't true anymore. So now we remove the text view from the screen so it doesn't actually exist anymore. Now we've spoken a lot about when we want to use an if statement and when we want to use a ternary operator. This is really important when it comes to you wanting to model your views. And another topic in SwiftUI is called view dependencies. So a view dependency is the dependencies that your view needs. So does your view need a state variable? Does it just need the a var so you can just pass in some data? What does it need? And in some cases, you may actually have it where you actually have a child view within your main view. So what, we, what we're going to do in the next example is we're actually going to look at how this can work and how we can actually use another property wrapper called binding to pass data between one view to another view when they are both connected. So let's see that now. So now we have an example again with our arrow view, but this time rather than that being the logic for our actual image within the actual content view, we've actually moved this out into its own separate view called view dependencies arrow. And if you actually look at our separate view, if you notice and look at and compare the two of them, they're actually both the same. So they both are marked with struct as you can see here and they both have the view protocol on the end of it and they also both have the body 
computed variable so that we can render them as views. So it's really important that when you're creating your views, you keep this in mind and do this. So within our view dependencies arrow, let's actually go into this view because we want to start, let's start from the top and um, the bottom. So we have this new property wrapper here called app binding. So what does app binding actually mean? So app binding is a property wrapper that allows you to bind or a value between two different views. So in this case, what we're saying is that we want to pass in a Boolean from a, another view. So in this case, the parent, and then based on this Boolean, we want to actually read the contents of it whenever it changes. So what's going to happen here is that if we actually change this property is open, it's actually going to cause this view to re-render itself and show a new state. And likewise, what we could also do with a binding is we could actually change the value for is open as well if we wanted to as well. So if we wanted to, we could do something like this. And this would be valid. But I'm not going to do this because we don't want to change the dependencies arrow within this view. And you might be wondering, why do I not want to do that? Well, the whole purpose of this view dependency view is literally just to re represent the UI on the screen. It shouldn't have any responsibility in terms of changing any data at all. It's just literally to show the state of the data, which in our case is, is open. So if we actually scroll back up to the top of our content view, we still have our state property wrapper here is open, but this time, rather than us having the logic for the image directly in here, we now are using our view dependencies arrow view, and this time as well, for our initializer, and it's marked with the is open parameter, we're now passing in our state property into this view. Now you may be wondering what is this dollar sign and this dollar sign is really important because what this allows us to do is it allows us to actually access the binding for our state property. So whenever the state property changes, this binding will update our dependencies arrow view. If you didn't have this dollar sign in front of it, you're actually going to get an error like so. And you'll see here the error is telling us that it can't convert the boolean to the type binding bool and instead it's saying to us that we need to insert a dollar sign before it so let's do that now okay cool so just so you can see how this works the exact same way i'm just gonna run this on the simulator so i'm gonna run this on the preview and then we're gonna tap the toggle arrow button and as you can see it works literally the exact same way so nothing is different so the flow here is we change our is open property within our content view. Our view dependencies arrow is bound to the value of this property. So whenever this variable changes, we cause a re-render within our struct because we just want this struct to represent and show the changes in our data. In the next set of videos, what we're going to do is we're actually going to cover stuff like state, binding, more controls, modeling your data in even more detail. So that's everything from me in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up as well. If you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.